bless everyone this Resurrection Sunday. Happy Resurrection Sunday, man. We're so thankful that he lives. That Jesus lives. He's not in the grave. He's not dead. He's alive and he's alive in us who we'll believe. Amen. And this is truly representing the day that the Lord has made. That we may rejoice and be glad in him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for coming to worship with us this morning online. Amen. Streaming only. In Jesus' name. Thank God there's no distance in prayer. There's no distance in the presence of the Spirit of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your love, oh God. Thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, oh God. Hallelujah. To us, God, you are faithful. Even when we're not faithful, you are faithful unto your word. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for giving your son. Hallelujah. That we're it, it, it reminded even more this day that you so loved us. That you gave your only begotten son. And whosoever believes in him yes. shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And John 3, 17 says, God, you did not give your son in this world to condemn anyone that the world through believing in Jesus might be saved, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, that we are believers today. Hallelujah. We continue to confess our belief in the Lord and Savior, Hallelujah. our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want you to say the Lord's prayer with us as you're able in Jesus' name. Repeat after me, our Father, which art in heaven, holy is your name. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our sins as we forgive others of their sins against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We give you glory. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, let's shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you for the victory that's in your Lord Jesus.
say that again. your children, your marriage, your spouse, your extended family, your church family. Jesus. Jesus. There's something about that name. Matchless Savior. Because all hell has to bow at the mention of that name. All circumstances have to bow. All viruses, all sickness and disease has to bow. It has to succumb. Because when he spoke anything out of his work, out of his mouth, it became divine law. Whatever you need, whatever it is you need, whatever it is you need. Whatever it is you need, he is your joy. Whatever it is you need, he is your peace. Whatever it is you need, he is right now your salvation. Whatever it is you need right now, he is your strength. Whatever it is you need right now, he is your laughter. Hope for the lost in his name. Jesus. 
of your son. We thank you that life is in Jesus Christ. There is no life outside of him. Hallelujah. He is the true vine. The father is the husbandman and we're the branches and we're nothing outside of you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's do a little bit of thank you, Lord. Amen. Come on, we're going to pep it up a little bit then we're going to receive our love our ties and all
God. Yes. Hallelujah to your name. Yes. Your name above all. Yes. Your name above all. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If it had not been for your goodness. But God. But God. But God. I've learned that the, that the very word but means to zero out. It means to omit whatever you were saying before. Huh. But God. Thank you. I was going through some Hallelujah. things. Uh -huh. but, God. But, God. but God. But God. But God. But God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Call unto me and I will answer you. Call unto me and I will answer you. Yes, Call unto me.
Should we dash our foot against the stone? You provided a way. Thank you. you provided a safety yes, net. Thank you. It's like the song says, it's good to know that, that you're here whenever we fall. But Father God, you gave us something better. Thank you. And that thing I seek after. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. You wouldn't have said it if you didn't equip us to be able to do it. And that thing is to keep us from harm. Lord, it is my desire. It is my desire. It is my desire to be kept from falling. Even so much that even if I should, I still keep on. Father God, let that be our hearts, the hearts of your children, especially for this day, because the enemy sets out to, to try to condemn like you said, there is now. Just like faith is now. Yes, Lord. So Thank if we are to walk in it, yes, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Yes, Lord. Because to be in Christ Jesus Thank you, Lord. means to be in the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Oh, yeah. Liberty to be exactly who you are, you have in purpose your people to be, to be fearfully and wonderfully made in your image, Father. We are that is the thing that you've given us freedom to be, yes, an expressed image, yes, Lord, of your very presence, yes, Lord, not just for the righteous. Even more so for the lost. Hallelujah. For yes. the hearts. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Father. Yes, Lord. And Father, we thank you. Yes, we do. Grateful. We Lord. take this mantle step by step. Whatever progressive forward motion, even with every setback. Grateful, Lord. And you can But your because your word does Lord not Jesus. return void. Thank you. Thank you. We can march on in your name. Yes. We can march on, as they say, from victory. Yes. yes, Lord. From victory. Not to get it. No. We march on from victory. Yes, Lord. On this yes. blessed, holy day. Yes, Lord. To reverence. Yes, Lord. 
should be the product the, the majority of our prayer in our praise father thank you because it would anytime you, anytime somebody does something thank for you. anyone the polite thing is to give thanks mm -hmm. thank you Jesus. and if you're if you're even thanking someone it's, it should be because they've done something thank you Lord. Yes, Jesus. and if he has said it is finished Moses prophesied about it. You had, you had David prophesy about this thing. You had, you had, you had Isaiah, and you had, you had all these it, all, perfectly Your manifested perfect throughout the ages. eternal love. He said, Your "I told you, I told you, I told you, so. you. Yes, Lord. That thing which you had, <laughs> David said, "Man, I, I long for the day." That we can come to him without feeling so yes, Jesus. Yes, condemned. Jesus. Thank you. Jesus. Having to justify Thank by you. our works. Thank That's you. what he was really saying. Oh, blessed are those. Guess what? We are the we are them. We are here. We are we are here now. So now Thank you, Jesus. there is yes, now Lord. no condemnation. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Man. Thank you. Your perfect eternal awesome love and power. I told you. One day when we were Thank lost, you. Yeah. Thank Jesus, you died Thank upon the cross. You. scripture um, amen it says Jesus talking he says give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down and shaken together Thank you. and running over shall men give unto your bosom Thank you, Jesus. but with the same measure that ye meet with all it shall be measured to you again Amen. Thank Jesus you. said to give and it shall be given. That is a Thank blessing you. in giving. I'm reminded of this story that Jesus told his disciples when he was teaching them. And he, he, he made a point. He said, and I can't remember verbatim what it said, but he, he said if, if there are people sitting at a table to eat, 
he said, he asked him a question. He said, who is greater, the ones who are sitting there being served or the one who's serving, the one who's being a blessing? He said, the one who is serving is greater. Amen. So saying that in the spirit of being a blessing, amen, it's just better to give than it is to receive. Ain't nothing wrong with receiving, but I want to be on the giving side. That's the blessing side. <laughs> amen. So praise God. Um, if you're going to mail your payments, you can mail them to P.O. Box. Oh, <laughs> forgive me, not payments. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. You're gonna make if you're going to mail your gifts, amen, your offerings or your tithes. Amen. Your tithes go to your home church. Amen. If this is your home church and your tithes go here. Thank you. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> but if you're going to mail those in, you mail them to P.O. Box 773, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74106. Make checks payable to Mother Tucker Ministries. You can also give online at mothertuckerministries.org. Amen. And, uh, just be a blessing. Amen. And if you don't have to give, we can still be a blessing. Amen. That's right. That's right. God says, God says he wants it all back. Yes. Everything that he's given you, everything that he's done through you, Amen. everything that he's been for you, he wants it all back. Amen. Give it all back. So thank you. Jesus. Praise God. Thank you. Um, thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you for the gifts and, and the givers. We thank you for what you're doing by your spirit. We thank you for the ones who desired to give and didn't have. God, we thank you that you're going to make a way. And God, we thank you for the minds who want to give, who want to be a blessing. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing. Thank you. And that the money that's received will be used for the intent in which it was given. We thank, thank you for you. what you're doing by your spirit in this thank ministry, you. in this city, in this nation, thank in you. the world. Thank you that you are moving. And we thank you for what you're doing. For what you're doing. Thank you, Jesus. For what you're doing. Thank you. We thank you for what you're doing. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for what you're doing. Yes. Same line of we you. thank you for what thank you're doing. Yes, Lord. We thank you. Thank you. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Let us give. Amen. Give. Give unto the Lord. Let us give. treat this afternoon and, um, we're gonna ask brother Micah Tucker to come up and he's gonna bring forth the word today amen, amen. in Jesus name thank you Lord right. praise God thank you amen let's believe God and let's pray for brother Micah and his 
Grace, grace, grace. Amen. Grace, 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 grace. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Take in a psalm, Psalm 113. I'm reading from two different translations. Praise the Lord. Yes, give praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord now and forever. Everywhere from east to west, praise the name of the Lord. For the Lord is high above the nations, his glory is higher than the heavens. Who can be compared with the Lord our God? Who can be compared with the Lord our God, who is enthroned on high? Yes. He stoops to look down on heaven and on earth. He lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the garbage dump. He sets them among princes, even the princes of his own people. He gives the children, the childless woman, a family, making her happy, a happy mother. Praise the Lord. From the New King James. We read, praise the Lord, praise those servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from, the, from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God who dwells on high, who humbles himself to behold the things that are in the heavens and in the earth? He raises the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the ash heap, that he may seat him with princes, with the princes of his people. He grants the barren woman a home like a joyful mother of children. Praise the Lord. Lord, we thank you for your word in this life. And you are the giver of life. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I am but a vessel as we all are, whether it's this day, it's not because I'm standing up here. You already know what this situation was. But when we leave this place, as we go back to our homes, as we go to visit, as we go to run errands, whatever we do tomorrow, the next day, and the following day, and the days after that, Lord, you're worthy to be praised. Yes. Thank you. This is the day mm -hmm. of victory. This is the day we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. And without that resurrection, there would be no power. We needed the resurrection. We needed the resurrection. Thank you, Jesus. And I thank you for it, Jesus. I thank you for the resurrection in my life. As my mouth opens today, please let it be pleasing to your sight, Lord. Do not take you. it lightly. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 Um, to be honest, I'm not going to be before everybody long um, because we have some giving to do in our neighborhood. <laughs> and I have a time frame. <laughs> and these feet are going to hit some pavement. <laughs> and God has blessed us with some sun. It's supposed to be raining. And he's faithful. We got some rain. We got a lot of rain. But he's faithful. Yes, he and he knew what was on my heart to do. Um, so I'm not going to do any big exposés. We are going to read the word of God a lot today. So if you have your word, um, I really like the tangible Bible. It has memories. There's <laughs> memories to you. Uh, it's, it's my pastor Paul over at Victory Christian used to say, make it like an address book and your fingers know where to turn, where to turn. So where to go? Um, so I have a lot of books here, but that's okay because there's some things that I want to share and it took, um, took getting up early and I'm not going to lie. I wasn't, you know, the Bible says be prepared in all seasons. <laughs> yeah. 
So um, I had to seek the Lord. There was, you know, of course we have a lot of things we can talk about, especially in this day and age. We, there's a lot of things. Um, it's not focusing on any virus. It's not the virus. That's the culprit. A spirit of fear and panic has been unleashed mm. in the earth. Mm -hmm. And we see it globally. And we know we know that God did not give us a spirit of fear. That's right. But of power Hallelujah. and of love and of a sound mind. We know this. For those of us who believe, we know this. Mm. So we can rest assured. That God is in control. Yes, He is. Um, today, I wanted to kind of cover. I think it's an encompassing feeling. It's called um, "I Just the Resurrected Life." Mm. The Resurrected Life. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to read something before we jump into the book of Isaiah. I want to read uh, from Matthew 15, verse 8 through 20. Um, just a little bit about me. I'm Mother Tucker's grandson, but I also, also spent a long time, as we all have, <laughs> so being under the Word and studying the Word. and um, It got to the point to where it started to get I, I noticed we like to argue the word. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a time and place for that when we're defending it. And you defend the word by the word, not by your emotions. Mm -hmm. Your zeal for the word of God will come forth as you're defending by the word. You know, Jesus always answered a question that was given with a piece of scripture with the rest of scripture. <laughs> So he was the word. He is the word. And so, um, but I asked, I asked the Lord some years ago, when you get so full of knowledge that then you start to try to dig to get back to the power. The Holy Spirit gains the authority for us. And we use the name of Jesus and we, we can do this, but we can get trapped in headiness. And so, Years ago, I said, take me back to the simplicity of the word. Because I knew a lot. And he gave me a lot of wisdom. I, I, I say that humbly, but I, I knew what I had. I wasted some of it, unfortunately. But my goal was to get back to the simplicity of the word. The, the power of the simplicity of the word. Because most people that you talk to aren't theologians. They didn't go to seminary. A lot of people weren't raised in a household like we were raised in. You know, we had ministers galore. You just turn around and there's one. Or worshipers or whatever. Um, but I learned the simplicity. I, you know, to get fat on the word is great. But to get to the simplicity of the word. And our Father is so kind. And as I, as I studied the words of Jesus, I got back to studying the words of Jesus studying how he talked just you could you could feel him you know and, and, and why was why was John so intimate with him you know and you felt the power of Peter <laughs> the bold and mm -hmm. it's because of the simplicity these simple men men who he, whom he called they changed the they changed an environment, an atmosphere. Mm. They lit a fire with the simplicity of the Word of God. And so it's powerful. But I want to read this. This is Jesus um, speaking. Matthew 15, 8, 20. We'll jump back up to 7. You hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you, for he wrote, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce, for they, for they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. 
Then Jesus called to the crowd to come and hear. Listen, he said, and try to understand. It's not what goes into your mouth that defiles you. You are defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you realize you offended the Pharisees by what you just said? Mm -hmm. Je Jesus replied, Every plant not planted by my heavenly Father will be uprooted, so ignore them. They are blind guides leading the blind, and if one blind person guides another, they will both fall into a ditch. Then Peter said to Jesus, explain to us the parable that says people aren't defiled by what they eat. Don't you understand yet, Jesus asked. Anything you eat passes through the stomach and then goes into the sewer. But the words you speak come from your heart. That's what defiles you. For from the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, lying, and slander. These are what defile you. Eating with unwashed hands will never defile you. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. A resurrected life. I took this from, I thought this was said very well by James, James Orr. He wrote this in 1890. A resurrection means an arising, a rising, a return to life subsequent to death. James Orr, he wrote, redemption is not merely of the soul only, but of the body as well. It is a redemption of man and his, his whole complex personality, body and soul together. So now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna read an account. I'm gonna read, okay? This is gonna be just sola scriptura, as they say, all right? Don't have a lot to add because it's self-explanatory. But turn with me to Isaiah 42. We're gonna be in Isaiah just a little bit. on this other Bible. I'm going to be reading from the New King James. Um, starting at 42, the top of 42. Behold, my servant whom I, whom I uphold, my elect one in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. He will not care, cry out, nor raise his voice, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A, bru a bruised reed he will not break, and smoking flax he will not quench. He will bring forth justice for truth. He will not fail nor be discouraged till he, is, he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands shall wait for his law. Thus says, the Lord, thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name. And my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing to the Lord a new song, and, pray, and his praise from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it, you coastlands and you inhabitants of them. Let the wilderness and its cities lift up their voice the villages that, that Kedar inhabits. Let the inhabitants of Selah sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastlands. The Lord shall go forth like a mighty man. He shall stir up his zeal like a man of war. He shall cry out, yes, shout aloud. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have held my peace a long time. 
I have been still and restrained myself. Now I will cry like a woman in labor. I will pant and gasp at once. I will lay waste the mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will make the rivers, coast, the rivers coastlands and I will dry up the pools. I will bring the blind by a way they did not know. I will bring the blind by a way they did not know. I will lead them in paths they have not known. I will lead them in paths they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked places straight. These things I will do for them and not forsake them. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed who trust who trusted in carved images, who say to the molded images, you are our, our gods. Hear you deaf and look ye blind that you may see. Who is blind but my servant or deaf as my messenger whom I send? Who is blind as he, as he who is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant? Seeing many things, but you do not observe. Opening the ears, but he does not hear. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will exalt the law and make it honorable. But this is a people robbed and plundered. All of them are snared in holes and they are hidden in prison houses. They are for prey and no one delivers. For, for plunder and no one says restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will listen and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for plunder and Israel to the robbers? Was it not the Lord? I'll say that again. Who gave Jacob for plunder and Israel to the robbers? <laughs> Was it not the Lord? He against whom we have sinned? Who gave Jacob for plunder and Israel to the robbers? Was it not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, nor were they obedient to his law. Therefore he has poured on them, on him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle. It has set him on fire all around. Yet he did not know, and it burned him. Yet he did not take it to heart. And we're going to go to the... But now, top of 43. But now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Isaiah 52. You all, I just figured since this is seriously a day of resurrection and the power of that resurrection, I just want to give the word its due. Okay? Isaiah 52, 9 through 15. Break forth into joy. Sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our Lord. Depart, depart. Go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Go out from the midst of her, be clean, you who bear the vessels of the Lord. For you shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. Just as many were astonished at you, so his visage was marred more than any man and his form more than the sons of men. Mm. So 
sorry, y'all. When you think about what he really did for us. We can't really do it justice. And the simplicity of the justice that he asks us to do is to worship him. To choose him. To live for him. Just as many were astonished at you, so his visage was marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations, hallelujah. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths at him, for what had not been told them they shall see, and what they had not heard they shall consider. Then we're going to read chapter 53, and we're going to move to the new account. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or com comeliness. And when he, we see him, there is no beauty that we should even desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And he hid, as it were, our faces from him. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has, has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. He was, a, he was led as a lamb. He was oppressed. We're in verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shears is silent. He, so he opened not his mouth. I will have an interjection right there. We need to get better at being silent when we need to be silent. We speak when we don't need to speak, and then we're silent when we need to speak up. leave that there. <laughs> he was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He was put, he has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. That's the foretelling, and it's pretty detailed. That's the foretelling. Let's go to the actual account that was recorded in the New Testament. Uh, let's read, let's turn to Mark chapter 15. And I'm going to switch over to the New Living Translation and read the account from there. I'm going to actually read 
15 and 16. You guys might be like, oh, this is a lot of reading, but it's the word of God. Okay? Very early, chapter 15. Very early in the morning, the leading priests, the elders, and the teachers of religious law, the entire high council met to discuss their next step. They bound Jesus, led him away, and took him to Pilate, the Roman governor. Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, you have said it. Then the leading priest kept accusing him of many crimes, and Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer them? What about all these charges they are bringing against you? But Jesus said nothing, much to Pilate's surprise. Now it was the governor's custom each year during the Passover celebration to release one prisoner, anyone the, the people requested. One of the prisoners at that time was Barabbas, a revolutionary who had committed murder in an uprising. The crowd went to Pilate and asked him to release a, a prisoner as usual. Would you like me to release to you this king of the Jews? Pilate asked, for he realized by now that the leading priests had arrested Jesus out of envy. But at this point, the leading priest stirred up the crowd to demand the release of Barabbas instead of Jesus. Pilate asked them, then what should I do with this man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Why, Pilate demanded, what crime has he committed? But the mob roared even louder, crucify him. So to pacify the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He ordered Jesus flogged with a lead, with a lead, lead or lead, uh, with a lead tipped whip, then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. The soldiers took Jesus into the courtyard of the governor's headquarters, called the Praetorium, and called out the entire regiment. They dressed him in a purple robe, which stands for royalty, and they wove thorn bushes into a crown and put it on his head. Then they saluted him and taunted, Hell, king of the Jews. And they struck him on the head with a reed stick, split on him, or spit on him and dropped to their knees in mock worship. Hmm. Sounds like some of us today. When they were finally tired of mocking him, Ooh. They took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him again. Then they led him away to be crucified. A passerby named Simon, who was from uh, Cyrene, was c coming in from the countryside just then, and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. Simon was the father of Alexander and Rufus. And they brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. They offered him wine, drugged with, drugged with myrrh, but he refused it. Then the soldiers nailed him to the cross. They divided his clothes and threw dice to decide who would get each, each piece. It was, it was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. A sign, announced the charge, a sign announced the charge against him. It read, the king of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. The people passing by shouted, shouted abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. Ha, look at you now, they yelled at him. You said you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Well then, save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests and teachers of religious law also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down from the cross we can see it, we can see it and believe it. Even the men who were crucified with Jesus ridiculed him. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until there until three o'clock. Then at three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice. Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachni, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. 
One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so he could drink. Wait, he said. Let's see whether Elijah comes to take him down. Then Jesus uttered another loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the Roman officer who stood facing him saw how he had died, he exclaimed, this man truly was the son of God. Y'all, this was an unbeliever. People ask, well, how do we know who Jesus is? We accept God. But Jesus is a problem. He's a, as his word says, he is a stumbling block for many who are actually called to believe. But yet this Roman officer, who is probably at best a pagan, he even said, this man surely, truly was the son of God. He even recognized. And that wasn't because Jesus did a miracle. It's because something he was experiencing in that moment. Some women were there watching from a distance, including Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the younger and, and of Joseph and Solomon. They had been followers of Jesus and had cared for him while he was in Galilee. Many other women who had come with him to Jerusalem were there also. This all happened on Friday, the day of, of preparation, the day before the Sabbath. As evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea took a risk and went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Joseph was an honored member of the high council, and he was waiting for the kingdom of God to come. Pilate couldn't believe that Jesus was already dead, so he called for the Roman officer and asked if he, if he had died yet. The officer confirmed that Jesus was dead, so Pilate told Joseph he could have the body. Joseph bought a long sheet, bought a long sheet of linen cloth. Then he, he took Jesus' body down from the cross, wrapped it in the cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been carved out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone in front of the entrance. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where Jesus' body was laid. This is chapter 16. Saturday evening, when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and, and Salome, went out and purchased burial <coughs> spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, on the way, they were asking each other, who will roll away the stone? Who will roll away the stone? Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? But as they arrived, they, they looked up and saw the stone, saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe sitting on the right side. The women were shocked, but the angel said, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go and tell his disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you before he died. The women fled from the tomb, trembling and bewildered, and they said nothing to anyone because they were too frightened. Then they briefly reported all this to Peter and his companions. Afterward Jesus, afterward, Jesus himself sent them out from east to west with the sacred and unfailing message of salvation that gives eternal life. Amen. After Jesus rose from the dead early on Sunday morning, the first person who saw him was Mary Magdalene, the woman from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went to the disciples who were grieving and weeping and told them what had happened. But when she told them that Jesus was alive and she had seen him, they didn't believe her. Afterward, he appeared in a different form to two of his followers who were walking from Jerusalem into the country. 
They rushed back to tell the others, but no one believed them. Still later, he appeared to the 11 disciples as they were eating together. He rebuked them for their stubborn unbelief because they refused to believe those who had seen him after he had been raised from the dead. And then he told them, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name, and they will speak in new languages. They will be able to handle snakes with safety, and, they, and if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick, and they will be healed. When the Lord Jesus had finished talking to, with them, he was taken up into heaven and sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. And the disciples went everywhere and preached, and the Lord worked through them, confirming what they said by what they said by many miraculous signs. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Before I move on, just take that in for a second. I don't. I don't really need to say anything. Just right where you are, just give them thanks. When we read it, we don't get the full breadth of it sometimes. But it was serious. So serious that the prophet Isaiah speaks by the word of God, saying that his flesh was just marred beyond recognition. You know, in other accounts, in the Gospels, it says he cried out, Lord, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Yes. That's love. That's a depth of love many of us have. We don't even have, but that's what he wants us to have. Yes. And we can't say, but he was Jesus. Stephen, the apostle Stephen, when he was being stoned, mm -hmm. he cried out, Lord, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. a side note, we say we can't forgive our enemies. What was done to them was demonic. It spoke to a, a hardness, an evil place in the heart of man. It's something that God realized a long time ago, shortly after the fall of man. When he said, I will not contend with their hearts forever. He says, none of the evil in there. That was not his intended creation for us. Right. So we're talking about conspiracy theories and all this stuff. I have friends sending me things all the time. But I came to realize a few weeks ago, real quickly, you guys, a conspiracy has been going on since a certain angel seated in his heart to follow his own will. And ever since then, there's been an ancient conspiracy that is still at play today. But we have the victory. Because this conspiracy isn't just against us. It's against the one who created us. That's who he's trying to get back at. So just think about these things as we as we go through the scriptures today. So we also have the second chance. So we start with the resurrected life. You know, throughout the Bible, especially Old Testament, he's called our Redeemer over and over again. God, our, our Savior, our salvation comes from the Lord, you know, and he will redeem, and he has redeemed, and he has... Yes, he continuously redeemed his people. Continuously redeems us. We see a second chance as, I gave you a second chance. Like I can count on one, two. That's your second chance. A third isn't going to be a second chance anymore. That's going to be a third chance. And then I'm through. And you might not make it to the second chance. 
You might not. Because I got to check to see where my, my gauge is, my attitude meter, you know. But God is a God of second chances. His second chance is deeper. And if you think about your own life, how many, oh, I won't do that again. Well, can I give you a second chance? He doesn't say I'm going to give you a third chance or a fourth chance. Or a, I'll give you another chance. Okay. We repent. Oh, I'll give you another chance. His second chance is important for this life because it could affect the life to come. And it affects for us, and it affects our purpose. And he's just as determined about you as the devil is. But if you depend on him, he will fulfill his purpose in you because he promised to finish it. So his second chance is vital for us. And then we must remember when we tell him, Lord, I, I don't want to do that anymore. You know, we deal with struggles and circumstances, but we have to press forward. Yes. It's important that we don't stop and we press yes. forward. Yes. Yes. Not in our own might either. Yes. You take your will and you submit it and match it to his will. And then you have power. Mm. Don't turn your will over to the enemy. Keep it submitted unto God because he's able. Hallelujah. He's able. Yes, he but he did tell us we have to submit to him yes. for us to get us, for him to get us where we need to go. Second chances. I made a little note. This connotes, uh, and this is the second chance of repentance. Let me Let me say that. The notation here is the second chance of repentance. For mankind, our second chance starts at repentance. Mm. You, you can't move on without repentance. Mm. You can talk, you can say, I know God, you can say, well, he talks to me, and he, but you can't move on until you repent. It was so important that John the Baptist paved the way for the coming Messiah with repent and be baptized. Turn from your sins. And then Jesus continued on. And at the beginning of his ministry, he said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So it must be pretty important must be vital to the believer and all who would dare to believe. So this connotes a, a repentance. It connotes a change of mind with regard to sin. A sorrow for sin, which is primarily intellectual in nature, as well as a change of soul, a sorrow that leads to a turning away from sin. Turn with me to Romans 2, 4. Okay. Since you judge others, I'm starting at verse 3. Since you judge others for doing these things, why do you think you can avoid God's judgment when you do the same things? Verse 4. Don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that his kindness is intended to you for you to turn from your sin? But because you are stubborn and refuse to turn from your sin, you are storing up terrible punishment for yourself. For a day of anger is coming. God's righteous judgment will be revealed. He will judge everyone according to, the, to what they have done. He will give eternal life to those who keep on doing good, seeking after the glory and honor and immortality that God offers. 
but he will pour out his anger and wrath on those who live for themselves, who refuse to obey the truth and instead live lives of wickedness. There will be trouble and calamity for everyone who keeps on doing what is evil, for the Jew first and also for the Gentile. So nobody escapes this. And for all you who say, oh, my father is kind and Jesus is just love and he just loves me. His love is jealous and kind. Long suffering, as we've been privileged to experience. So if he's given us this many chances, and all he says is, come to the table and eat. I will dine with you. I knock at your door. Let me in. I'll sup with you. Why wouldn't his wrath, as David said, who could stand against the anger? The wrath of an angry God. No one. So let's not get our perception twisted. Go to, turn from there to Acts 2.38. Acts 2.38. This is when Peter was talking to God's people. Peter's words pierced their hearts, and they said to him, to him and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? And Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children, and to those who are far away, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Turn with me to Matthew 27, 3. I know this is like a Bible study teaching today, but this what was on my heart. Matthew 27, 3. When Judas had betrayed him, oh, when Judas, who had betrayed him, realized that Jesus had been condemned to die, he was filled with remorse. So he took the 30 pieces of silver back to the leading priests and the elders. I have sinned, he declared, for I have betrayed an innocent man. And listen to how the world treated him. How the pious people treated him. The self-righteous. Those who we want to have our backs. Those who we want approval from all the time. What do we care, they, re they retorted. That's your problem. It says, then Judas threw the silver coins down in the temple and went out and hung him. This is what we do. We run to the world. We want the approval of the world. We want the approval of our other church families. We're not really, I mean, we're battling with, well, Lord, I know you tell me to do this, but what about, I mean, what about so and so over here or this ministry over here? And, you know, I don't want that to come off wrong. But those same people who we're seeking approval from, a lot of times they will turn and say, what do we care? When you fall, when you realize the error of your way, that's your problem. And we might hear something like this, oh, bless their heart. And we know how shallow that can be. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians 7. I'm going to do verse 8 through 11. And this is when Paul was really excited about their heart, the Corinthians' uh, heart of repentance uh, for the church of Corinth. 
I am not sorry that I sent that severe letter to you, though I was sorry at first, for I know it was painful to you for a little while. Now I am glad I sent it, not because it hurt you, but because the pain caused you to repent and change your ways. Now I am glad I sent it, not because I hurt you, but because the pain caused you to repent and change your ways. It was the kind of sorrow God wants his people to have. So you were not harmed by us in any way. For the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in salvation. There's no regret for, for that kind of sorrow, but worldly sorrow, which lacks repentance, mm. results in spiritual death. There's no regret for that kind of sorrow, but worldly sorrow, which lacks repentance, results in spiritual death. Just see what this godly sorrow produced in you. Such earnestness, such concern to clear yourselves, such indignation, such alarm, such longing to see me, such zeal, and such a readiness to punish wrong. That's what their, their sorrow produced their repentance produced that was something to rejoice in that was something to rejoice in and turn with me to acts back to acts 3 hope you guys are catching on I'm just reading stuff that is turn away from sin let us turn back to God Turn away from sin. Let us turn back to God. Acts 3.17 through 23. Friends, I realize that what you and your leaders did to Jesus was done in ignorance. But God was fulfilling what all the prophets had foretold, foretold about the Messiah, that he must suffer these things. Now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Then times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord, and he will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah. For he must remain in heaven until the time for the final restoration of all things, as God promised long ago through his holy prophets. Moses said, the Lord your God will rise, raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. Listen carefully to everything he tells you. Then Moses said, anyone who will not listen to that prophet will be completely cut off from God's people. Let's do a few more. Let's go Matthew 3, 7 through 10. I'm feeling like Brother David Ingalls when he's, he's running his services. You have that Bible, you better have quick fingers ready to turn and read. Matthew 3, 7 through 10. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to watch him baptize, he denounced them. You brood of snakes, he exclaimed. Who warned you to flee the coming wrath? Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we're safe, for we are descendants of Abraham. Some of us are guilty of that. We're safe. Oh, I gave my life to God, but, you know, so we're good. I do what I want, and then uh, he understands my heart. He understands your heart. But he also sees your ways. That means nothing. For I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from those very stones. Even now, the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to sever the roots of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. I baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I am not worthy even to be his slave and carry his sandals and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to say he is ready to separate the chaff from the wheat with the winnowing fork 
Then he will clean up the threshing area, gathering the wheat into his barn, but burning the chafe with never-ending fire. Hallelujah. Now we move to the renewing. Now we, we move. So that is the repentance. I just want to keep this really simple. So we have the offer of redemption and the resurrected life. We've been crucified with Christ, but yet we live. It's not I, but Christ that lives within me. The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in us. That means that spirit that has all power. Knowledge and the authority that comes from above. And it's always with us, being in us. So we can live a resurrected life. Yes. And we should live a resurrected life. Desiring a resurrected life. Yes. Again, I say, if he did not rise again, our faith would be pointless. He had to overcome the power of the curse of death. So we can say, as David did, if David knew it back then, death, where is your sin? We're not afraid of death. We don't have to be. We rejoice. We rejoice. Hallelujah. So then we have repentance. Where's our second chance? To come to him is to come to him and realize our position. Realize where we've been and what we've been. And that it was far less than what he has called us to. And we repent. And guess what, guys? That's just the initial start. You're going to repent many times in your growing life. Mm -hmm. Because the whole thing about repentance doesn't come from you. It's because something has been revealed to you. And you got to see how low you really were and really are. I don't care how good you've been. He's better. I don't care how much you've done and how many goals you have yet to accomplish. His goal is great. So the thing is, is when we come to him in that initial repentance, it's not only being sorry for the way we thought before. Well, I'm a good person. That's good. But you're a good person without God. So we recognize him. We recognize him in honor and glory, and we recognize who we were. And we began to change the way we think. The, the, you know, in Romans it says, be renewed, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that literally takes form in the natural. When we start to renew our minds with different things, whether it's overcoming an addiction or a habit or whatever, when we start creating a new habit, you build, literally you build new synopsis. And that's a big thing. Because that put light on the word that, oh my gosh, it literally has a physical effect. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So first we renew our mind. Because if you just repent for something, you might mean it here. And I, I'm a witness to this. And you're trying to overcome this thing or overcome this old way by your own self, by your own will, but you have not renewed your mind in that area or even started renewing your mind in that area. It won't work. It'll come back. Because that file cabinet hasn't been cleared out and so it's still there it gives us something to revert to and the devil's just waiting for the right trigger and believe it or not sometimes your your flesh is waiting for the right trigger so we want we have to renew and that's when our repentance starts and then as we go from faith to faith glory to glory and he begins to purify our souls purifying our hearts and as we begin to examine ourselves, which everyone should be examining themselves daily, that's your job. And anything you miss, you Holy Spirit, bring it. Because he's going to do that. And be sincere about it. Don't deceive yourself. Just be sincere. And if you're not ready for something, Lord, I, one day I want this going, but I'm not ready right now. 
Be honest, because he already knows your heart and your intentions. Let's, not live, let's, let's quit living behind the facades of our faith and start walking it genuinely. You must search him and seek him out and serve him in spirit and in truth. So as he gets you to another point and he, he gets some dredge off of that, that dredge stuff that's, that's floating to the top, then, oh, Lord, because guess what happens there? A revelation comes. And you're like, oh, Lord, I didn't even know that was there. I didn't even know I was acting like that over there. I repent of that. Help me change. you're about face and you're walking with him and you're going through it and one day that too will be gone one day we want things to happen like this all the time but sometimes we have to walk through some stuff mm -hmm. even walk through ourselves <laughs> and it's not always pretty but he's he's determined to make beauty from ashes mm -hmm. he's determined to do that and we do thank him for that. Yes. So then we have the renewing. We have the renewing. You guys can jot this down because I am, whoo, I'm doing good. I can read it. We're almost <laughs> done. Sometimes when you're standing up here, you know it feels a lot longer than it is. Thank you, Jesus. All right. All right. Turn with me then to 2 Corinthians. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 5, let's start at verse, verse 14. Either way, Christ's love controls us. Let me, put, let me start at 13. If it seems we are crazy, he's talking, this is Paul, and he's talking to the people. He said, if it seems we are crazy, it is to bring glory to God. And if we are in our right minds, it is for, for your benefit. Verse 14, either way, he's saying that doesn't mean either way, it doesn't matter. He says, Christ's love, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our, to our old life. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have died to our old life or our old self. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ, who died and was raised for them. So, we have stopped evaluating. This is very important, believers, especially believers, because only you would get this. You have a new spirit in you. And when you have a new spirit in you, if you, if you tap into that spirit and allow him to have his way, begin to have his way, he'll change your perception. And it's very important because we see people from the outside where he sees them from the inside. Mm -hmm. We think we know people, but it's only by his spirit that we can really know people. Mm -hmm. yes. So it says, so we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Praise God. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. What a gift. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. What a gift. What a gift. In verse uh, chapter 6, 1 and 2, it says, as, God part, as God's partners, 
We beg you not to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness and then just ignore it. For God says, at just the right time, I heard you. <laughs> at just the right time, I heard you. On the day of salvation, I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now, for today is the day of our salvation. Word of the Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Let's go ahead and turn to Romans. Romans 12, 1 through 5. Praise you, Jesus. I thank you that your word is exactly what it is. It's powerful. Doesn't need anything added to it or taken away from it. Thank you, Jesus. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly our act of worship to him. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world and let God and let, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. Just as our bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function. So it is with the, with the body of Christ. We are many parts of one body. And we all belong to each other. Amen? Amen. Amen. We have to work together as a gear. Just like the inner workings of these fancy watches that we wear. The gears are perfectly entwined. To not only keep... Get this, your watch is perfectly in, in, intertwined that it keeps not only seconds, but it keeps minutes, and those minutes lead up to hours. And some of them will even keep track of the days based on the turning of the gears. We should be that inter, interlocked. Yes. And when we get there, you'll see the church do some great and mighty things. God is working, as Pastor Regina says to me all the time, he's working in his sovereignty. We can feel him here lately. This whole year, actually, has just been seeing him and feeling him working in his sovereignty for what pleases him. God watches over his word to perform it, even if we miss it. He knows what time it is at all times. And if we're lagging behind as his body, He'll bring us up to speed later. But he's got to keep some things in order and on time because he has a word that has to be fulfilled. And it has a timing that's already been set that only he knows. So that's a little side note. But um, Now, the good news. All of it's good news to me. The sorrow of it. The passion of it. The redemption of it the power and authority of it that came out of it. But now we're going to read the promises. This promise specific. As I was listening to Andre Crouch, I woke up with this song on just playing in my mind as I was asking the Lord, you know, this 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 opportunity came very last minute for me and um, I'm gonna be honest my heart and soul was not, my heart was okay. He's been doing this work where, where things used to probably set me on fire before. <laughs> um, I don't feel the effects of it here. And I might be addressing it. Like I was telling my brother Brian, I said yesterday, I was, I was just kind of um, expounding to him, just, what had been going on inside, like just what I've been recognizing and like Lord, and literally can feel my heart just like, almost like, I don't know, sharp. And then I'm like, Lord, please don't let me have a heart attack. This is, <laughs> just get me through this. But, you know, we deal with people 
and we're people. And I always say that dealing with people sometimes is hard. And some, I have a lot of grace for it, but sometimes, I'm going to be honest, the stupidity of people that you're just like, the simplicity that you want a little complexity to come into that you can be like, oh, wow. You know, you're just like, oh. And then you think you're on crazy pills and you turn quickly and you realize, you, you know, I'm a people too. And I know I, I have that issue sometimes, but I try to stay aware. But what I've been running into are people that so many people don't stay self-aware. They're selfish, but they're not, that's not the same as self-aware. Well, I know what I like. That's selfish. That's not self-aware. Self-aware is going back to what we said at the top of the hour. Like, I need to shut up right now. Peace be still. Let me hold my peace. Self-aware is, oh, I know, Lord, I should have spoken up then and I didn't. I'm sorry about that. Help me get over that. And what was the stem of that? Why didn't I speak up? Lord, I should have done this and I didn't do that. Lord, I didn't do this, and I should have done that. Lord, I have these feelings that i just been... Some feelings, you don't catch them quick. Or you'll be three steps that way. So realizing what I feel. You know, we think feelings are bad. No, God gave us feelings. He feels. But what he wants us to do is learn how to turn those feelings over to the Holy Spirit so we can feel in a righteous manner, not in a carnal manner. And when we feel in a carnal manner, it will cause us to speak and act and think out of carnality. And then we do some damage, not holy damage. We do some damage. And then we start repenting. <laughs> Again, right? We go back to that repentance message. Lord, forgive me. I just, oh, please help me make it right. Some things you aren't going to be able to make right. He's going to do it in his own timing over there. Mm -hmm. But we still have to lay it down at his feet. You know, some things we do, we, it's, it's, it's our mouths, guys. As James said, it can set a whole forest ablaze. It's like, whoops, but the cat's out of the bag, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And again, Lord, I need your fire hose. Holy Spirit, I need your fire hose. We think it's all about us forgiving people. You know, when you stand up, when people stand up and go to these conferences or revival, whatever, the preacher starts talking about what people have done to you. And everybody's like, yes, yeah, oh, I know, oh, I know. I just, oh my God, I know. And I've just been trying to do so much good for everybody. Okay. What have you done to someone else? You know what? Because when we think about that every single day, mm -hmm. we're able to forgive. Just like he said we could. He ordered us to. So that we can receive forgiveness and everything that comes with that. So, let's go to the promises of God. I say the promises. It's this promise that I Let's focus in on. Because we know there are many promises for those who believe. Let's go to Matthew 5, verse 3. We're almost done. Almost there. So, the two things I want to read. The Beatitudes were, were on me through the night. So I'm just going to go through them with you. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. 
God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. I want to stop right there. I've been hearing people say, we're all God's children. That's a lie. The Bible is very specific who God's children are. He said, for all who believe and receive him earn the right to become children, sons and daughters of the Most High God. There's a, there's a condition because if you're his child, your actions are going to show it. You can't be his child yet serving the enemy. It doesn't work. And if it does work, then he can't be holy and pure like he said he is. He can't be righteous after a holy and pure and righteous seed. You know, John says in First John, like I believe it's First John, do you go on sinning? Living in sin, and then you say you live in the light? No. You deceive yourself. So in this time, I, I, there's just a lot of things that I'm hearing and I've heard in our culture today, our Bible culture. And it's not a free-for-all. And I don't want you to have to wait till you get to heaven to realize, or get before the Lord to realize you don't do what you just want to do. He's a God of order. Always has been. And he still is. That's how you rule and reign. He rules and reigns. And he's justified all by himself. He doesn't seek wisdom from men. He is wise. Yes. And the giver of wisdom. Another side note, sorry about that. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. Turn over to Matthew 28. It's our last scripture. Jesus. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Jesus came and told, I'm sorry, not 18. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Verse 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You guys, as I close up, and thank you for your patience as we went through the word. I thought this day of resurrection didn't, didn't merit my interpretation. It was recorded. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow, right? We can triumph today. And we can hope for a triumph tomorrow as well. But I encourage you. There's some things that are really dangerous for anyone who claims to believe. Don't mistake being a child of God if you have not confessed the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Why would he receive you as his child when Christ is the firstborn and you won't recognize the firstborn? You must recognize the firstborn as your Lord and Savior. Not just Jesus, my homeboy, Jesus is my, my friend. No, he is your Lord and your Savior, and he determines to be your master. Amen. That's what Lord is. Yes. David said, and the Lord said to my Lord. Amen. The Lord said to my Lord. 
The disciples said, Lord. Over and over again, they called him Lord, Rabbi, Lord, Master. Are we above them? We're living in serious times, and not because of this virus. But we're going to see time speed back up. And we need to really consider some things. And we really need to start speaking up when we're in the conversation of things with our neighbors and friends and, and even strangers that we're around who have this false philosophy. And where we faltered, sorry, where we faltered is that we've, we've turned and made the word of God and the power of God a theology. And we talk about it in arguments and discussions as if it's, it's philosophy like we're ancient Greeks. This is not a philosophy. This is real. This is the foundation of our faith, the salvation of our souls. It is the redemptive power and work that can save the whole world. We know that's not going to happen, but it's there. So if we don't lead them in the way, if we don't pray over those who we know, I'm not saying go and get in arguments. That doesn't work. Again, we say know when to zip it. As we shine our light, because we are called to be a light, as we shine that light in these coming days, don't be afraid. That goes for me too. Don't be afraid to share the simplicity of Christ. First, by the way you live. Mm, yeah. By your spirit that you carry around. Mm -hmm. Check your attitude daily. If you're married, stop abusing your spouse. Learn how to love them. And you know where that starts? Begin to learn how God loves you. If you're living in sin and beneath your privilege, if you're a human being watching this, sitting in this room or watching this, then guess what? You're living below your privilege if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you have not accepted him. Some people say, I know him, but I don't, I don't, I don't you know, I used to, there's no uses with him. Get back on track. Life outside of him is pointless. Read Ecclesiastes. And I know most of you aren't as wealthy as Solomon. But I praise God for you. For those of you who may not believe right now who are watching. And the Holy Spirit led you here. Remember, it's the goodness of God that draws men unto repentance. It's not me beating you over the head. But it's not me standing for what's wrong either. But I say, Come dine at his table. You get to know him. And it's simple. It's not even that fancy. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father God, I thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for the honor of, of just sharing your word. I thank you for the power of your word. Mm -hmm. The reality of your word just to read it, to chew on it, to really consider it, and then not to deny the power of it. Father God, may we be blessed, and I thank you for this resurrected resurrection hour, Lord. For those, of the, those who are out there who do not believe, and those that are out there that, that say, I want to believe. So Father God, I say, just in their simplicity, Help them right where they are in their unbelief. Any level of unbelief that is wanting to block them from coming to your altar. And those of you who confess him, who have chosen, I, I choose him today. Then right where you are, raise your hands and begin to give him praise. Begin to give him praise. He's right there. And the heavens rejoice.
Breda la ira un colmere voce te le zavossa e arrecchi la voce. Bascia te la voce e le voce. May your spirit fall fresh on them as they receive you, Lord. Those with the hardened places who cannot yet come to you, keep working, send laborers along. It's not your will that any shall perish. We know some will, but that's not your will. You died, Jesus, for the salvation of all who will come. Find the altar. Come to his altar. Do it on your time. Some of you may have done it now, but do it. Do it in your time. When this is done, get real with God because he'll be real with you. And he'll restore you to make you whole. And it won't be like you think. Because get this, y'all. We want God to act like a microwave. We want him to do it in our speed. When he's been wooing you for 20 years. For 30 years, for 40 years, for 49 years, for 50 years, 60 years, some of you 98 years, it doesn't matter. If you haven't come to him yet, to him yet, you haven't realized how much he loves you and how much he's been keeping you and crying over you and tugging at you to want him because he wants you. Imagine, imagine. And none of us have been in this. Imagine wanting somebody so much in the most pure sense of ways, loving them so much, and they just abuse you. And you keep on. And you keep on. And when they cry out to you, the oh, Jesus, and we go, help me. And he shows up. And then you move on from him. Like Hosea who took the harlot the prostitute and marry her. And Jesus said, and the, the Lord God said, I want you to take her back each and every time. She's going to stray away. She's going to cheat on you. And I want you to take her back. And then, and then you're going to have children. I want you to name this child this. And each name meant something. This was a prophet of God who married a harlot. Because thus saith the Lord, this is what you look like in my eyes. This is what you're doing to me. Though you have sold yourself to other gods like a prostitute, I keep taking you back. That's how deep his love is. Get to know his love for yourself. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Because he lives I can face tomorrow Because he lives All fear
sincerity and in truth to brother Micah amen and hallelujah we just honor the Lord this day and for his faithfulness that he remains the same he is the rock of our salvation hallelujah I hope everyone has been encouraged today and I know there's a lot of streaming going on 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 Easter resurrection Sunday this is resurrection Sunday amen amen this is acknowledging the death, burial, and resurrection Amen. of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Got nothing to do with Easter eggs That's and right. uh, bunnies, yeah. rabbits. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you could, we can make things be a metaphor, a metaphor, whatever you call it. You can, but it's all about Jesus. Yeah. Amen. And he's so good. God is so good to us. And we're so grateful to be able to come to you by airways and this is Mother Tucker Ministries, Revival Center House of Prayer, and I'm, I never say who I am, but I figured y'all know I'm Pastor Regina Tucker. Regina Tucker, one of the leaders God has placed in this house. I'm not the only one. Amen? Amen. Just out front. <laughs> Amen. We have plenty of ministers uh, in this ministry, and some you haven't been seeing lately because of the, you know, corona thing, and we have elders, uh, elderly we have elders, uh, pastors, dad, and mother, Brian, associate pastors here. Yes. Been with the ministry over 25 years, and we're grateful for them, and we're letting them stay in the comfort of their homes, that they're praying and still with us in spirit and having prayer meetings in their home at 6 a.m. in the morning. And we're still having prayer meetings and uh, conference calls, and we're still just pray for the ministry. We're still praying. We got to keep praying, saints. Amen. And this is praying time if, if it ever was. Yeah. Amen. God is good. And thank God for the food ministry that's still continuing. Um, thank God for Elder Paulus continuing to pick up. Amen. That's my brother, Elder Paulus Tucker, continuing to pick up the food. And we're still feeding people on Tuesdays and Wednesday nights where we have to pre-bag. Um, and they're, we have to give them to them out and give the food outside, but they're so grateful. And, you know, it hurts our heart that we can't let them pick out their foods. Yeah. The items that, amen, Brother Mike is very faithful, working with the food ministry, Brother brother Brian. And we're just thankful for the faithfulness of Elder Rodney, working the camera and, and ministry. And, and those who we haven't mentioned, there are those in the background, we're still here. Yes. Amen. In Jesus' name. So we thank you for your support. We thank you for the faithful support. The members are not able to be here in physically, but thank you for tuning in and supporting and praying and still continually financially supporting, amen, the work, amen, that the Lord started through Mother Grace Tucker, mm. founder of this work, and we're, we're just, it's an honor to keep the legacy going, amen, yes. and God is increasing the labors. Yes. For the harvest sake amen so god is good and we bless you in the name of the lord father we thank you for this day that we have come together to honor what the lord jesus has done for us father what you did for us because of your love for your creation lord god you counted us worthy even though we feel like we're not worthy that's how we feel but you didn't say we weren't worthy you said we are of much more value than the sparrows and then the lilies on the ground, Lord. And so we agree with you. But you call us valuable. We are, we are valuable because you said that we're valuable to you. And Lord, we want to live our lives 
in honor of the, of the value that you put upon us, Lord. By accepting of the Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, good Lord, you are our boss, Lord Jesus. You're the one who leads and you're the good shepherd. And you, leads us by, you lead us by your spirit and we're yours. And we say yes to your will, to your ways, God. In the name of Jesus, bless each and every one, Lord, that views this today or whenever they view it. Bless God, comfort, comfort their hearts and minds by the sweet comfort of your presence. That every need be met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Save, heal, and deliver by your word and your spirit and the blood of Jesus. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Everybody repeat after me what I say unto one. I say unto all, watch and pray and live holy every day. Amen. Grace, peace, and love be multiplied unto all until we meet again in Jesus' name, whether here or in the air. God's grace to you. Amen.